Okay, so let's go through this real quick so you can understand what happened. The Social Security Administration, they made a big whoops. Not a little one, but an actual sizable whoops. And here's the deal. Article written by Lisa Rain. Social Security program failed to properly notify people of huge fines, the report says. This was delivered on March 21st, 2024, at 10 a.m. Here we go. The Social Security Administration's internal watchdog office failed to properly notify some poor and disabled Americans before levying Huge fines on them. An investigation by an independent watchdog agency found the two-year probe into a little-known anti-fraud program discovered particularly stark due process violations starting in 2018, <coughs> with investigations finding no evidence that the government ever sent written notice to some of those hit with massive penalties, which at times reached more than $100,000. Even when the Inspector General's office, which runs the program, did send notification letters in previous years, investigators found it often failed to properly serve people with notice of the proposed fine. So they get like one notice, but they wouldn't get the fine notice. They wouldn't get all the notices they were supposed to. The findings raised significant legal questions about the validity of penalties on low-income people who are potentially subject to having their future Social Security and disability benefits withheld. Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz wrote, summarizing his findings in a report issued this month to Congress and Social Security Commissioner Martin O'Malley. Now, I've represented a lot of CDR claims. I've represented a lot of overpayment claims where people get hit with these fines. Uh, almost all of them have some notice problem, but I would say probably 60% of them don't receive all the notices that they're supposed to. And I'll always be like, okay, well, where's this notice? Oh, well, I didn't get it. Are you sure you didn't get it? No, I'm sure I didn't get it. Are you really, really sure you didn't get it? Oh, I'm absolutely sure I didn't get it. Okay, call the SSA, ask them to send this notice out again. That way I can go ahead and take a look at it and go from there. All right. Harowitz took the unusual step of urging the Social Security Administration to review every penalty the government has issued under the Civil Monetary Penalty Program since 1995 to notify claimants who were fined and to take corrective action. His report follows a Washington Post investigation in 2022 that revealed how escalating penalties, which started before Inspector General Gail Ennis took office in 2019 as a Trump administration appointee and continued under her tenure, affected more than 100 disabled and elderly people receiving disability benefits who were accused of fraud. Over a seven-month period that ended mid-2019, 83 people were charged a total of 115 million. That was 83 people, 11.5 million. Documents obtained by the Post showed a jump from less than 700,000 for all of the 2017. Okay. Social Security, uh, which long ago delegated administrative uh, administration of the program to the Inspector General's office, suspended the Civil Monetary Penalty Program following the Post report. Agency spokesman Mark Hinkle said in an email that officials have diligently moved forward with a review of the Civil Monetary Penalty Program. Yeah, they were just they were hitting too many people with these civil monetary penalties. Following the Post report, the White House also ordered the Council of the Inspector General on Integrity and Efficiency, the CIGIE, a group that assigns federal watchdogs to investigate misconduct allegations against fellow Inspector General to launch an inquiry into Ennis's office. Because they were going to go after the uh, OIG, the Office of Inspector General, to find out why they were charging people so many of these. Horowitz is continuing a broad investigation of Ennis's office, but said he moved more quickly to notify a committee to fellow watchdogs of fellow watchdogs of the specific improprieties he found in the anti-fraud program because we believe they require prompt agency attention and corrective action. The Post obtained a copy of the report, which has not been made public. Ennis's office, in response, published in the report, pushed back on a number of the conclusions and wrote that any mistakes made in trying to notify people of fines were, in effect, harmless errors, which obviously they weren't. Uh, Harwitz disagreed with the arguments. Just, just to give you guys an idea, like how harmless these errors were, uh, just to understand like the basics, the fundamentals of essentially like how this works. Here is uh, the constitution.congress.gov uh, on the constitution annotated. Uh, this is about notice of charge and due process. Uh, basically, here's the 14th Amendment, Section 1, like the, our constitution, like our 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 bare bones, fundamental, like the beginning of our rules that define how America is going to treat its civilians and how its civilians have to basically interact with its government. 14th Amendment says, Section 1, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States 
and of the state wherein they reside. Okay, so you're a Fed citizen and you're a state citizen. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So they can take it away, but they got to give you due process of law. Nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The Supreme Court has explained that an elementary and fundamental requirement of due process in any proceeding, which is to be accorded finality, is notice, reasonably calculated under all the circumstances to apprise interested parties of the pendency of the action and afford them an opportunity to present their objections. The notice requirement may include an obligation to take reasonable follow-up measures that may be available upon learning that an attempt at notice has failed. In addition, notice must be sufficient to enable the recipient to determine what is being proposed and what he must do to prevent the deprivation of his interest or his rights. Ordinarily, service of notice must be reasonably structured to assure that the person to whom it is directed receives it. However, the notice need not describe the legal procedures necessary to protect one's interest if the procedures are otherwise set out in published, generally available public sources. So just to, just to like clarify... When they say when you know when it, when it says like okay so basically Ennis's office disagreed said they were you know essentially effectively harmless errors it is a constitutional violation of your rights to not receive proper notice related to essentially them trying to take away your benefits them trying to charge you a significant penalty etc okay it is a uh, in a comment sent separately to the post and a spokeswoman Rebecca Rose referred specific questions about the findings to Social Security since the agency has had full responsibility over the administration of the anti-fraud program since 2022 Ennis an attorney who was a partner at the Wilmer Hale law firm before her federal appointment has asked the chairman of the inspector general's council in meetings and letters since early this year to curtail the probe correspondence shows accusing Horowitz of exceeding his authority and violating the federal law designating the authority of federal watchdogs. Why would you restrict? I mean, think about that. For just one moment. Why would you restrict the amount of information a watchdog group could actually go and look at and obtain? Like, it's just, it just looks ultra sketchy. It just looks, it looks sketchy. And then you're pouring sketchy sauce on top of the sketch. And it says urged in the letters that the report on the anti-fraud program be rescinded. We believe DOJ OIG, OIG has no authority to make unprecedented programmat programmatic recommendations to the Social Security Administration. Rose wrote in an email Monday, it is disappointing that our concerns, which have government-wide implications, are not being taken seriously. After lawmakers and the Social Security uh, Commissioner received Horowitz's report, this Ennis's office also protested... <clears throat> In a letter to the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, that communication obtained by the Post called the findings an invalid interpretation of law, which Ennis's staff argued gives the office wide latitude on how to serve notice to people on proposed fines. But does it? They got to know how much. They got to know when. They got to know why. They're not, they got to know where. They got to know how to appeal. And a lot of those don't usually go out. The report comes as President Biden faces pressure from a top Senate Democrat to fire Ennis, whose 500-person office is charged with oversight of the agency that distributes retirement benefits to 69 million, more like 71, Americans and monthly disability checks to about 15 million others. Okay? Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden, in a letter in February, told the president that he had lost confidence in Ennis, whose promises to establish a culture that welcomes debate, collaboration, and transparency appears to have been hollow. The letter cited numerous performance issues. In his new, new statement Monday, Wyden said that the investigation into the operations of the anti-fraud program bolsters his case. So just to, just to clarify, Ennis is in a situation because Ennis tried to restrict investigation, which then caused even more kerfuffles between the SSA, the commissioner, the OIG department, and basically all the senators, House reps, and the president. And this is not a good thing for President Biden, too. Like, coming into the election season, the Republicans, although, to be fair, they're not usually up on a lot of Social Security stuff, the Republicans probably could use this to their advantage to say that the SSA is charging people without properly noticing them, which is, you know, it, it seems like an unfair thing that they could tie to, like, what's happening to, you know, Donald Trump and all of his stuff. So it's an interesting it's an interesting situation. Albeit he receives notice, he's getting like these ridiculous charges. So you could, you, you, they could potentially go ahead and try to like play that propaganda game. But again, Republicans tend to be really bad at noticing what's going on with the SSA. Like they are 
I mean, if they were, if there was like a button to like be like, what's going on with the SSA, what's not going on with the SSA, they'd push it off. It continues to be clear that the inspector general refuses to take responsibility for anything. Why instead, Gail Ennis needs to go, needs to go so that the trust in the inspector general's office can be restored. A spokesman, and remember, Ennis has been there, you know, for a little while, so you know, this is this is getting heated. A spokesman for Harwitz referred a request for comment to the Inspector General's Council. Interior Department Inspector General uh, Mark Greenblatt, Chairman of the Council, declined to comment through a spokeswoman because they know things are about to get heated and politicians are getting involved. Congress created the anti-fraud program with bipartisan support to help Social Security recover benefits paid in error in its two anti-poverty programs for low-income elderly Americans and those with disabilities. Civil fines are the common alternative when fraud is considered too small to warrant criminal prosecution by the Justice Department. And those civil fines, you know, remember you got administrative restrictions, they take your benefits, civil fines, it's just some money stuff, criminal stuff, you're going to jail, or they're going to track you, stuff like that. Okay. In years past, cases had often been settled with agreements for drastically lower fines as claimants gradually paid back what they owed taxpayers. Because, you know, there's no way that a lot of these disabled and retired people can actually pay back larger amounts. The law establishing the program requires the government to notify anyone who is a target of a fine and allow them to request a hearing before imposing the penalty. This did not always happen on Ennis's watch, though. Horowitz found. So what they're saying is they're supposed to be given notice. They were supposed to be allowed to have a hearing. They're supposed to know how much they were actually going, you know, how much the inspector general's office was going after them for. And some of them didn't receive those notices. This did not always happen on Ennis's watch, though Horowitz found her office imposed a fine of $135,000 in one case in March of 2019, but there was no United Parcel Service confirmation that any notice was provided to the individual. The report said a month earlier, the office imposed another penalty of more than $140,000 with no notice delivered at all. The same was true in May of 2019 when the penalty in excess of $160,000 was imposed with no proof in file that any notice of the in initiation of the action was provided to the individual. So the individual is just sitting there getting an OIG notice being like, well, actually, sorry. No, the individual is just sitting there with no notice from OIG being like, what the hell is this? The inspector general's office said it is continuing to review these records in these cases. According to the report, before Ennis arrived, the investigators found her predecessors did attempt to serve notice by sending letters to those targeted with penalties. But the report found that this method also often violated the statute. Since many states do not consider notification by U.S. mail and private delivery services a legally permiss permissible method of serving notices. Because, you know, remember, you usually get a server They'll take a notice. They, you know, I gave this to that person. That's the correct person. Here's your thing. Boom, done. So the, the point that I'm getting at, which I think is really important here, is that there's something really scary going on with the Office of Inspector General when it comes to notifying people of massive fines, massive civil you know, fines or restriction of benefits or hitting them with some obnoxious overpayment. Maybe there's fraud involved. Maybe they deserve it. But the point is, they're not properly properly notifying people as to what's going on. So people are having this new level of depression, anxiety, and fear, which is not good throughout this whole system. Anyways, I will catch you guys a little bit later. You have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, I will catch you a little bit later, probably in about two days. Uh, Tammy Schleter, can I call you? Yeah, just call me tomorrow. I'll be at the firm. I'll be on calls. I have to work on two main big things, though. So I may be in and out of calls, but uh, bottom line is you can always call in. 407-279-1754. Uh, please remember to like, please remember to subscribe, and please remember to hit that uh, all button when you subscribe. Also, go to Google, type in Disability Resolution Law Firm or Disability Resolution Florida if you want to help out the firm and leave some stars. I'll catch you a little bit later. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, and we will go from there. Thanks so much. All right.